We are back and we are going from strength to strength here on the Zero to Hero series where we're starting off with zeros in the footballing and in the Soraya landscape. Guys that don't cost absolutely anything, very cheap budget players and we're going to try and grind through all the kind of the levels, the steps of learning Soraya from like a viewpoint from today of starting with zero to try and win some star cards, to try and open some boxes, get some essence, get all the free stuff that we possibly can by hustling and grinding with a wee bit of football IQ as well as a little bit of market know-how for all the twists and turns along the way and on this series what we do every week is we're scouting players to come into the gallery to come into the squad to help us with the strategy that we've got before us and with the shake up now of it being the warm-up mode we had a few more options open up for us in the video today we're going to be previewing the best budget Bundesliga cards that you guys recommended in the comment sections and one of you guys that commented on the last video is going to win that in-season Nicholas Dorsch and in today's video we're in an international break so there's a little bit of a different dynamic going on for what we can do and maybe what we're looking at but we have three other clear categories still to fill before we're at capacity for the competitions that we can play with having that one eye on moving into the proper pro leagues eventually so stay tuned to find out how we did last weekend what cards we're looking at coming into the gallery this week who we did buy after the vote from the, the youtube poll from the the players we scouted on last week's video and what you need to do to get involved in this week's card giveaway at any point in the video if you do laugh you learn you like something or whatever please do like and subscribe to the channel and all that good stuff guys and let's just get stuck straight into it because i've got this page right in front of me right now and we only actually pulled in one reward and i want to open up the pro page i want to see what we actually did overall because i don't rem you know we're doing this once a weekend basically we're playing this kind of half passively as well it's been quite deliberately um I don't know if aggressive is the word, but deliberate with the cards we're bringing in, obviously. But I've not been grinding midweeks. We've not been like aiming for it. We've not been like hustling rivals as much as we possibly could be at this stage. But in Division 1 warm-up, we got into... I don't think there is Divisions, is there? But we got a box and it's a standard box. And it's great to see the little bits of progress we've already made, even in that kind of setting. Because we've already won a few cards and any card that we have in our gallery is our designated zeros the guys that you recommend in the comment sections that we scout in the video that we end up buying and bringing into the club they are our zeros and we're going to play with them all the way through this journey until we win cards that are better than them and then we give those guys away and we're basically just looking to constantly have quite a lean and mean gallery for starting out with zero and slowly but surely getting you know our fingers into it now this will be our first essence 100 percent chance of two essence out of this is fantastic so it feels like in this warm-up mode as long as we're continuously clipping boxes we will actually you know be getting some essence in which is quite good and that'll allow us to craft a little bit more hopefully we can get a wee bit more rivals action on the go i've been trying to do some set and forget strategies with that in international break that's going to be nigh on impossible but if we actually look at the last weekend uh results this is the team that got us into the top 100 380 points it's not too bad munoz definitely let us down there so uh really fitting the bill there as a zero but again this is a guy that you know has his day in the sun no two ways about it teji didn't really turn up we got into the top 20 percent and got promoted into this one which is yeah maybe there is divisions in this but no box to senior and barco turning up big for this one but no really anyone else and the global warm-up we had romero he was kind of the light down here wasn't he really top 15 percent nothing to be nothing to be sniffed at but we need to get to that top 10 percent and how far away for, oh we were not far at all by the way like 11 points so yeah this could be you know the beginning of a really fun kind of grind at this level of the game if you're playing it now coming into this weekend we have the international warm-up now i'm not too sure what we've actually got available in terms of cards also we have romero playing fantastic so we can play one division with romero let's see what competitions are actually open to us so all-star no warm-up mode international classic nothing under 23 is open is romero under 23 i wonder this could be fun because this is so we've got three categories left open for you guys to scout and get involved uh, in giveaways for we have all-star we have under 23 and we have la liga they are the three things and i think look we definitely need to get la liga looked at i think before we come back to the international break under 23 and global are really fun and quite broad strokes so maybe we could i, I think for this week what i want to see in the comment section as a top La Liga and then when we come back next week we do the La Liga guy that'll have us kind of you know covered for all the kind of leagues and regions and whatever and then we're looking all-star and we're looking at under 23 going forward from there so that feels like quite appropriate I think 
But let's see if Romero is under 23. Just Yeah, he is. Fantastic. So we can play under 23, uh, warm up this game week. And I think for an international break, this could be sneaky OP because under 23s, there's not that many of them. And if we do have guys that are playing domestic football or if there's an, an international game that we know should be pretty good and, oh yeah, like Trubin, two games against Georgia in the Czech Republic. That feels really good. Lunin probably gets one of them, but you know, if you've got two games there, that's just ultimate protection. And then we've got Georgia playing Ukraine and Albania. Now, the really attractive thing with both of them is that chances of conceding three are nigh on nil, you know. So even if they don't keep a clean sheet, both those guys are going to be, in this division especially, really handy. Suzuki looks really appealing, but that's against Australia, which is like top two opponent in that region, really. You're never really going to get a good game for some of these guys at international level, depending on who they represent. So yeah, I think I could take... It's between Mamadashvili and Trubin for me, I think. I think Trubin being... It's at home, isn't it? But it's not really at home, is it? And in Georgia, at home in Albania. Czech Republic. I've got like Hosek and Schick and stuff like that. I think I'd maybe go Mamadashvili. In defence, it's going to be really hard to look past Josko, the Bosco, uh, Guardiola. There's a lot of great options here, there really is, but Guardiola's just so good, and Scotland are going to give him possession, he's going to be high on the pitch, he's going to get a lot of final third passing, and then if anything happens from there, um, then that's when he really spikes, but he's just not going to do less than 65 in this game for me. Two games with Wurtz against Bosnia, fantastic. Holland, maybe a bit more tricky, is very appealing certainly. Kang against Iraq, feels like... <laughs> Should be a very good game. Xavi Simons playing Hungary in Germany. So there's a double header here. There's like a little love triangle between Bosnia, Germany and Hungary. And is there another team? Holland. Four of them actually maybe in this game week that are all kind of bumping off, bumping off each other. I may be wrong on Bosnia for this game week. It may be a different one. But there's a certainly, yeah, it is Bosnia in this one. There's a few of them that all kind of bump off each other. So there's some interesting things. Let's so obviously over two matches. You really want them for Bosnia. But if he did pop off against Holland... You've got that kind of, you know, ace up, uh, ace in the hole kind of um, potential. Ardor Guler playing Iceland and Montenegro. <sighs> that feels really good. I'd be really tempted by Ardor Guler at international under 23s, to be honest. But how can you not take Bellingham playing Finland? And I know the first game for England, you know, losing to Greece, it's kind of like, you know, whatever. Bellingham's still got an 82. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> And then the extra spot, uh, oh, Yamal is playing Denmark. Not an easy game, but he doesn't need much to, to go right for him. Uh, there's Kang in, of course. There's Haaland playing Austria. Two against, who was that? Slovenia. Cole Palmer against Finland. What did he do? 52. So if you got one decisive, you're looking at 77. Finland are probably going to be a bit easier than Greece, I would suggest as well. I think you just take Palmer. He's just so certain to play with his form and his, yeah. And then, um, probably you have to Captain Palmer or Bellingham. Ooh, let's go Bellingham. Let's cross our fingers and toes. We got a wee under 23. That could be sweet. Now, last week we were previewing or we were scouting the budget, the best budget goalkeepers around. And we had some great nominations from you guys. And we've ended up picking up a Dominic Ryman now. So this is our roster as we see it. So we've we've contacted the winner for Reese Nelson. So that card is going We've got Nicholas Dorsch giving away. So the next card we'll be giving away is Isaac Romero because he was a guy that we won when we opened a box. Uh, so we want to... And these guys we've won as well out of boxes. We've had great luck on this uh, on this little journey so far. So we'll be giving away Romero on the La Liga. Suggestions in the comment sections down below. But that really just rounds us off now. We've got Munoz, we've got Teji, Balakwisha, Clarkson, and now Ryman. When they're all fit and available, that's a wee team, you know. But in the international setting, we've got that one um ability, we've got that one game we can play. But outside of that, there's nothing else on. So it's really important in these situations that we stick our guys into training. Now we all have six lineups available to us, which is absolutely fantastic. But we want to go and get those guys XP'd up because we want to make sure that when we do call upon them, you know, they're gonna they're gonna kick as hard as they possibly can for us. So Locked them into training. We're seeing there as well. We've got two in-season cards, three classics. So we're just going with the cheapest ones possible. We got that Ryman on the secondary market for under ten pound, which is just fantastic for a goalkeeper of his kind of credentials. Feel free to check out last week's video in case you missed it. But when we come back from the international break, you know we're going to have a lot of interesting players and a lot of interesting spots. So I'm looking forward to that as well as just how we do with this little international break. Get the guys into training. 
and then this little team can go and pull a box for us. Last week's call that we put out to the Soria Scouts and managers around the world was who is the best budget Bundesliga card that we can bring in on the Zero to Hero series? A guy that can hit the heights that we need him to, but is firmly a zero. He's a very nominally uh, priced player and he's still good enough, like I've already tried to mention. Like he's, he, can, he can do the scores, you know. And one of the most voted for players on this was a player that's very familiar to my gallery and my channel, certainly. And that was Benjamin Henricks of RB Leipzig. Now, he's actually just left the Germany squad with a bit of an injury and I'm a big fan of Henrik's I think like one of the things that really impressed me with him is that he's a right back but he's a centre he could play defensive midfield you know he's that kind of guy and he's like a really good actual footballer he finds himself in the final third and loves popping up at the back post he loves playing a ball in from the edge of the box as well about a pound 50 or so for a classic card and I already know this guy's kind of scoring makeup. He loves getting above 70. You know, he's really got that in him. And he does have some of these fullback scores that do kill a fullback on occasion, uh, which is fine. But he does certainly have those good weeks often enough where he's certainly not going to kill your team and he can help you really um, get into a, a top end score situation. But since Gertrida has signed in um, for Leipzig, his position hasn't been as completely nailed. Because uh, Gertrida just gives a little bit of a different makeup to the back line because he can kind of shuffle in. They can really let Rom off the leash, and you've probably seen the benefit to to Rom this year. But he does feature in every game, and with subs not really been that handicapped. Like he's not a total write off, but you want defenders starting. You need them to collect as much AA as possible, um, and especially if there's going to be a clean sheet match, you need them to be getting sixty minutes to get the ten points for that. So it does kind of muddy the waters with Ben Henricks, but he's definitely a guy that pops up. Um, continuously when you look at the Bundesliga and you're looking for guys that are nominally priced because he plays at a top team he is decisive capable and his AA isn't shocking you know but you just need to be aware of this, these situations as they kind of develop now I was so pleased to see that Paul Wanner was coming up in the nominations this week on Zero to Hero because this is a Bayern Munich wonder kid who's got a lovely rookie card on Soria by the way who's starting to make a name for himself at Heidenheim he's been playing there on I'm pretty sure he's on loan I don't think they bought him this card's a little bit more expensive. He's in that Teji Saverni realm where, you know, this is still like a zero. This is still a guy that's not a star or a top of the food chain type card. And for a tenor, it's a very nominal value. But he's very excited. He's got a big future ahead of him in a lot of people's opinion. And already in this short time uh, at Heidenheim at, in Europe, and domestically like he's already showing that he's got a bit of it last year on loan in the Bundesliga too getting some minutes you know cutting his teeth and all the rest of it but now in the Bundesliga and in Europe I don't know it feels like this guy's going to have a, a, a big season and for a tenor like especially if we could get that rookie card version of him or something like that, that's a card you could hang on to for a number of seasons and have a lot of fun with because he is only 18 years old um so and he would, he would also I know we're not doing under 23 this week but if we did bring him in for Bundesliga and we had like another under 23 option later on come in, depending on what other competitions they're eligible for, that then could give us some future flexibility. So I quite like the, the Wanner kind of double play in that regard as well. The most individual nominations that we got was Diego Lieti from Union Berlin. And with an L5 of 69 and only costing a pound 66 on Classic, I can see why. Definitely the best points per pound in the list, I think by a long way. For a centre back that doesn't, you know, he's got one red there, a few oranges, but a pretty solid centre back. And recent forms kind of picked up form. So, you know, recent form I would give more uh, weight to than historic form because maybe there's a change of manager, change of tactics. Last year, Berlin were in Europe and that kind of did, um, did hold them back in some regards. This year, I don't think they've got that problem. And if they're just going weekend to weekend, you know, a nil-nil hard-fought clean sheet there, 2-1. He's also got his... Uh, decisive here but still getting 29 all around is what's most impressive there i know it's resulted in an 89 but even if he didn't get that decisive he would have still been looking in at like a 64 like we've seen in this game here with hoffenheim essentially so a defender that can do a 60 plus without a decisive and without a clean sheet is very valuable to have is very reliable and then if those other things do happen like you can see here with the leipzig and the dortmund games especially then they break 80 you know they do very well so um probably the most sensible one that we could get here because how many defenders are there in the Bundesliga that's similar and um, sorry our data has got some lovely tools let's look at similar players and let's do Bundesliga Alfonso Davies, Chabot, Koa Takura, Tapsoba like there's nobody here where you're like oh yeah like all these guys are all quite similar actually you know Alfonso Davies is getting back into the team now and at Bayern he does obviously offer a bit of a different proposition 
but like yeah i think he's a i think he's a really good pick at 25 years of age as well it's not like he's a, a veteran that's in his kind of twilight this, this is a guy that's like at peak similarly to nico el Velde or el Ve el Vede. A guy that's been around the block once or twice. A guy that I'm sure a lot of you scouts and managers are familiar with already. He's been a Mitch and Gladbach forever. He was linked to City a bunch of times when he was a lot younger. Uh, Switzerland International, he's under a pound. And when we compare him, especially to Diego Lieti, he's not really that different. And he's maybe at Mitch and Gladbach. I think you would expect them normally to be in a better position than Union Berlin. So far this season, he's been doing pretty well. He's been getting those 25 plus all around scores that we were mentioning. Again, without clean sheets, without decisives, which is magic. Is he capable but of adding clean sheets? Of course, I think Gladbach mm, not really had that in their game since the last summer, have they? He does have 30 plus AA in him, especially in even these losses here. He's not actually terribly different, is he? to Lieti is maybe less decisive I don't know is he less decisive I don't know actually quite a tough one an international player also so that's probably goes in his favour and yeah glad back I've not been in Europe but I don't know I actually think he maybe makes a lot uh, maybe I don't know about a lot more sense but I think he makes a bit more sense than Lieti from like an overall profile standpoint Lieti does have that L5 but where he's broke 80 a couple of times so like Maybe that just should tell you. This is maybe a bit more of this kind of L5, L10 situation. It's maybe more what El Velde offers. And Lieti, if we look at him over the same time period, he's just got that bit more power. Interesting one. We maybe need to think about some of the fixtures that are upcoming. Obviously, he's got internationals, but Heidenheim Mines, internationals again. And again, having an international utility, like that's that's ha handy to have. We're talking about the duality of Paul Wanner being under 23, but even the extra utility of an international player under a pound yeah it feels like he's he's really good paul wanner i think really good as well Lieti, i think makes a lot of sense also and Henrix, i think i don't think i can see him winning this one so now this video is live there's now going to be a poll on my channel it'll probably come up in your youtube feed but if it doesn't jump over to my channel homepage by clicking on my face somewhere on youtube and then if you hit the community tab and you should see like a little picture poll of all the cards in question feel free to vote for the winner and next week when we come back on we'll add them into the club we'll add them into the roster and i think by next weekend we should be looking at domestic football so i'll we'll be backfiring on all cylinders and from you guys that are nominating la liga cards this time next week you guys are going to be in the running to win the romero card but this is all the people that commented for the bundesliga one that are in the running to win the nicholas dorsch so thanks to everyone for entering the competition it means a lot all the support for the channel and hopefully we can reward one of these with a nice little card here and the winner is flindley I, I always, 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 always struggle to say that one, which is why I don't ever say it too often. I just put you on screen, drop a fist bump. But Flindley, is that how we say it? <laughs> Congratulations, mate. Anton Stack, great suggestion. Didn't make it into the cup, but thank you very much for that. Great shout. And feel free to check on Anton Stack if you want to check him out as well, guys. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this one. Have a great rest of your international break, and we'll be back next week for some more zero to hero action where we'll be giving away a card we'll be scouting players we'll be building some common warm-up lineups as it were before the weekend pre previewing all the fixtures and the best picks of the weekend and uh yeah on screen now some other stuff that i've made youtube thinks you might enjoy stay out of trouble and i'll catch you on the next one